great to be with you all today. Thanks for having me. So I want to talk about water. Water supports the immense diversity of life on Earth. We are made up of 60% water. You heard that earlier today, right? We also tend to take our water resources for granted. We assume that when we turn on the tap, that fresh water will come pouring out of that tap. So we live, we work, and we play in the Delaware River Basin. This river basin is made up of about 13,000 square miles that begins at the headwater streams in the Catskill Mountains of New York State and runs south down to the ocean near Cape Penelopen. Raise your hand if you've been to Cape Penelopen. Good. Okay, so you know where I'm talking about. So there are about 9 million people that live in this watershed, in this area that you see on the map, that get their fresh water from this watershed. There are another 7 million people that live in New York City and northern New Jersey who also get their, their fresh water from this watershed. The people in this watershed, on average, use about 116 gallons of water a day. We also know that there are more than 200 birds that spend all or part of their life cycle in this watershed. And the shores of the Delaware estuary down here in Delaware are critical breeding ground habitat for horseshoe crabs. We also have lots of mammals that live in this watershed. We have bears, bobcats, beavers, foxes, lots of different kinds of birds that use the terrestrial habitats within this watershed for their life cycle. So we know that about every 100 years, we lose about 50 square miles of forest. Forests are like water factories. They capture, they store, they purify, and then they slowly release water downstream to the humans that are there in cities and towns. So, fact, so forests are super important. Given all this, we know that there's lots and lots of water on Earth, but very little of it is actually in a form that's uh, in a source that we can actually tap into as humans to use. So you heard earlier that about 97% of the water on Earth is salt water. We can't really use that water, right? It's really hard to get the salt out of the water in order to make it into a form we can actually drink and use. The other 3% of that 3%, fresh water that's available on the planet, about a half of a percent is in a form that we can actually tap into and use as a resource. All of the things that we use water for, for drinking, bathing, cooking, and so on. So we know that here in the United States, we use the vast majority of our freshwater resources to generate electricity, to grow our crops, to raise livestock, and for all of the everyday uses that we that we use it for, to wash our dishes, to wash our clothes, to bathe, to drink. So it's, ex it's anticipated that by 2100, which is not too far off, by 2100, the population of this watershed that we live in will grow by 80%. So given the scarcity of water and the size of the population and the amount of resource we have available, what can we do to make sure that fresh water will be available for generations to come. So I have six small steps that we can all take every day to ensure that we have fresh water resources, okay? So the first thing you can do is to take reusable bags with you to the grocery store or to any store. So little fact, in the United States, we use about 100 billion plastic bags every year. If you laid those plastic bags end to end, we could circle the equator about 1,300 times. It's a lot of plastic bags. Only about 1% of them gets recycled every year, but about 10% end up in waterways. And when they end up in waterways, they can break up into little parts or they can get swallowed whole by the seabirds or the fish in our waterways, which is really harmful to them. Another thing you can do is eat less meat. 
It takes about 500 pounds or 500 gallons of water to produce one pound of meat. It's a lot of water for a little bit of meat, right? In addition to that, hundreds of pounds of manure, animal manure, ends up in our waterways every year and pollutes our waterways. So we know in southern Delaware and on the eastern shore of Maryland that we produce about 1.5 billion pounds of chicken manure every year. It's a lot of manure. So to put it in perspective, that is more manure than all of the human waste from the people who live in New York City, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta put together. It's a lot of chicken manure, right? So it puts a lot of stress on our ecosystem when we eat a lot of meat. So one thing you could do is just cut meat out of your diet just one day a week. That will lessen the stress on our water system. Another thing you could do is plant a garden. You don't have to have a big garden, just a few vegetables in your backyard, maybe a pot of tomatoes or some herbs, right? By doing this, you'll then buy fewer things at the grocery store, which means less water was used to produce the commercial crops that end up in the stores and also less fuel used to ship those crops and to fertilize those crops, right? So less pressure on the system. You should also pick up your dog's waste. So if you have to walk your dog, you should pick up your dog's waste, and here's why. Scientists at the US Geologic Service estimate that 20%, 20 to 30% of the waste of the pollution on our waterways comes from animal waste. So just that small action of picking up your dog's waste makes the water system healthier. The next thing you can do is to reduce the number of things that you buy and recycle whenever possible. So almost everything that you encounter every day takes water to produce, right? So the food that we eat, the cotton t-shirts that we wear, the pairs of jeans that we all have on, those all take water to produce. It takes about 1,400 gallons of water just to produce a single pair of denim jeans. The next thing you can do is to volunteer. You can volunteer in a river cleanup. There, there actually is a river cleanup coming up here in, at Christiana River, or the Christina River. Um, they do a cleanup every year in March. You can volunteer to help clean up to take some of the trash out of the river. Um, you can also volunteer for uh, restoration projects and for sampling of organisms that live in our watershed. So here's a for instance, the um, Partnership for Delaware Estuary does freshwater mussel sampling. So you can add to what's known in the scientific database, right, of all the data we know about biodiversity by going out and sampling freshwater mussels, measuring them, and adding your data, right, to what's known in science. Also, this partnership also does a uh, oyster shell recycling program. And by collecting those oyster shells and delivering them to the partnership, they can then use those oyster shells to develop habitats for baby oysters. OK, so I've told you six things you can do. I just want to review very quickly. Six small things, six actions you can take every day right, to make water better, healthier for us. Use reusable shopping bags. Eat less meat even if it's just one day a week. Plant a garden, doesn't have to be a big one. Pick up your dog's waste. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I noticed that you all recycled your water bottles today. Good job, keep it up. Make sure you always recycle those single-use water bottles. And don't forget to volunteer, give your time. You're all able-bodied, healthy kids with really smart ideas. You can help make the world better. Okay, so those are a few things that you can do to pay it forward and make sure that our water system, our, our ecosystem, is healthy for generations to come. Thanks for having me.